Erev Tov Kharim, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live here. Uh, trust everyone is doing well this evening, those that are watching on live stream. Uh, there's many of you guys that are starting to follow the news here on live stream. And keep in mind, now we will be actually uh, going back uh, first to Europe before getting into Israel. Uh, but we will be spending that time there, coming very soon there. Uh, so let me just... Um, uh, kind of update you there. Um, uh, well, next week, we will be flying into Copenhagen, Denmark. I've got a layover in Denmark for a couple of days. For those of you that may be in Denmark that would like to meet up with us, please send me an email at stephenbennoon at aol.com. I'd love to get a chance to meet you guys that are out there in this part of the world. And as well, uh, then we'll be going on into uh, the Czech Republic. And then from the Czech Republic, after about a month or so, I'll be back in Israel. But anyway, we have a lot of interesting uh, things that are going on around the world, as many of you guys are very well aware of, is the, the issue with Iran, uh, the deal being reached with uh, Barack Obama, uh, who has been spearheading this negotiations there with John Kerry, uh, and the nuclear arms deal that has been reached with, um, unfortunately, with uh, uh, Iran and uh, very disheartening. Of course, there's five plus one nations involved in this, including Russia. Uh, it, it, is, it is without a doubt that this was going to happen. Uh, we've pretty much figured this out ourselves for quite some time that we would actually see these things taking place. But uh, we didn't. We didn't anticipate um, that uh, um, that maybe that it would actually go down the way it has, but uh, I know Prime Minister Netanyahu was in a live interview uh, recently with the, uh, I'm trying to pull that up real quick here, I got a couple of computers here going on, uh, actually just lost that screen, but that's all right, anyway, uh, but he was, in a, he was in an interview there and they were asking him what his thoughts were on this deal, and as Prime Minister Netanyahu put in, the, in, the, um, in that particular footage there, was that the deal is not only bad for Israel, it's bad for the United States as well. And, and it definitely is. Uh, uh, Tehran already has missiles that can reach with a nuclear weapon to Israel. That's not an issue. They are working, though, desperately to actually be able to um, get missiles that will reach all the way to the United States. They're not done with the United States. They are fully intended on causing havoc for the United States as well. They consider, as Netanyahu said in the interview that he was on there, he said, we are the little Satan. He said, according to Tehran, you guys, speaking of the American people, you are the great Satan. And uh, Iran certainly uh, has vowed to destroy the United States as well as Israel. So why would one even negotiate in the first place uh, over these particular bombs and, and what have you more? Uh, so anyway, let me... Um, I want to take you to some headlines on this, uh, so just kind of bear with me here um, as I go in here. I'd like to share with you, though, here on Tehran Times, uh, this very interesting article here with Tehran Times, because you get a chance to see what uh, Iran thinks about the deal as well. It says, Rouhani, nuclear agreement will go down in history. Uh, this was reported out uh, right after the agreement was made there on July 16th says the President uh, Hassan Rouhani has said that the nuclear agreement between Iran and the 5 plus 1 group will go down in history and the future generations will be proud of it. Well, I can only imagine the only future generations that are going to be proud of this deal here are going to be the Iranians, of course. And, uh, well, you know, I'm sure the rest of the Muslim world will go right along with them uh, in this because they would all like to see the United States as well as... Um, uh, Israel destroyed, no less. Uh, Rouhani made the remarks during a meeting with the cabinet members on Wednesday. The president, who himself acted as chief nuclear negotiator from 2003 to 2005, described the talks between Iran and the 5 plus 1 group as the five permanent members uh, of the UN Security Council plus Germany as an unprecedented in its kind. Uh, he stated that the nuclear accord has opened a new page in Iran's history. The president added the deal has changed the public's opinions, wrong assumption about Iran, which had been created since the Islamic Revolution. He went on to say that Iran was viewed as a threat to security and stability uh, of the Middle East region to the extent that the country's nuclear uh, desire 
was submitted to the UN Security Council. Elsewhere, in his remarks, the president said that the major powers reached to the conclusion that sanctions and pressure against Iran were useless, uh, and that had no choice other than negotiations. Isn't it, isn't it interesting to see how he does there? You know, he knows, he knows that this is happening. Let me, let me show you guys this here. I want you to be able to see what I'm reading here as we read this here. I, by the way, I'm, I'm learning on this news how to actually do this here, but um, this is the article here on Tehran Times, as you can see right here. We're on the Tehran Times site. Uh, we can scroll down here. And I'm right down here at the bottom here, the next to last paragraph. He think, uh, excuse me, third to elsewhere is, as he says here in his remarks, the president said the major powers reached uh, the conclusion that sanctions and pressure against Iran were useless and that they had no choice other than negotiations. I'm, I'm blown away by this, guys. I tell you, I'm blown away by it. He thanked efforts made by the Iranian nuclear t uh, team and support supports provided by the leader of the Islamic Revolution, Ayatollah Siad Ali Khomeini. Ra um, Rahani said that the leader closely monitored nuclear talks and before heavier responsibility in this regard. Oh my gosh, it's amazing, amazing to say the least. Uh, that's the only thing I can say. Uh, anyway, um, moving on into to, to, you know, the, the President Obama, by the way, the, he's really been taking a pretty good beating for what he's been doing, and, and, and I'm glad to see that because to me it was a very careless, uh, very, very careless act, um, no less. So anyway, um, according to Arut Shiva, uh, we have a news article from them here, and I'd like to share that with you here so you can see that on your screen as well. Gaza rockets ex explodes in southern Israel. Uh, a rocket fired from Gaza uh, exploded on Wednesday night in the Hof Ashkelon Regional Council in southern Israel. Uh, the rocket hit an open area causing no physical injuries or damages and the explosion uh, was preceded by the red alert rocket siren which uh, was heard in communities throughout the region including uh, Zikem, uh, Chamiya, uh, uh, the Ashkelon Industrial Zone and uh, Hof Ashkelon. Earlier this month, uh, a barrage of three missiles was, was fired from the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt into southern Israel, Gaza Belt region. All three missiles uh, exploded in open areas, causing no physical injuries or damages. Uh, now, you want to keep in mind, we, we know that ISIS has been battling the Egyptians in the Sinai Peninsula here for, for quite some time. And, uh, and, and this is no doubt concerned that this battle could definitely spill over into Israel. Uh, we go on into, into the article here I, I, again, uh, going down to about the, the fourth paragraph. An IDF investigation revealed that the rockets had likely been shot from the terrorist in the Sinai Peninsula, which was confirmed by the Islamic State Jihadist Group uh, uh, affiliate in Egypt. Uh, the Hof Ashkelon region was also targeted by Gaza's terrorists in late June when a rocket exploded in an open area causing no injuries or damages. Following that attack, uh, Yisrael Betanei Chaim Evagador Lieberman said that Israel cannot put up with tricking, uh, tricking or rocket fire. Those uh, who are absorbed uh, trickling will e eventually receive uh, torrential rain. We must not accept the situation, warned the M.K. Lieberman, adding a government that is ready to accept the situation less than a year after the military operation in which we paid a high price in the lives of soldiers and the disruption of life of the entire country for two months has no right to, 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 to exist. The situation is tolerable, unacceptable, and we must put an end to it, uh, he added. Now, uh, let me just uh, say to you guys here that there, there has been talk already, in fact, I believe one rabbi in Israel has actually mentioned that there would come a war from Israel's southern border there. And, uh, and, and this may be exactly what we're looking at. This, this could be, um, you know, the, the situation that we're seeing here. This could be what's going to happen. And uh, so we, uh, we'll be monitoring closely um, 
you know, to see how, how is this, how's this going to happen, what's going to actually take place there. Um, let's go into uh, a little bit, another article I'd like to share with you here as well. And uh, let me just pull that up real quick here on the, the there's continued preparations uh, by Russia. And, um, and it's very concerning as far as when I say the preparations, uh, Russia is continually uh, making sure that they are battle ready. And uh, we, you can follow this here with me here on TAS News, uh, TAS.RU forward slash EN English. Uh, by the way, we also look at the Russian side of this as well, because in the Russian side, uh, they put up things that you don't get to see here in English. So it says, Caspian Flotilla Marines alerted within combat readiness uh, check. Uh, says, Moscow, July 15th, Russian Caspian Flotilla, uh, Flotilla's separate Marine Battalion based in uh, Astarkhan, southern Russia, has been alerted within, a, within combat readiness uh, inspections. The press service of the Southern Military District reported on Wednesday. The Marine Corps personnel will drill during the maneuvers. The preparation of the military equipment for a march moving of columns to the staging area with the further transfer to a military training ground on the Ashkelon region. Uh, upon arrival to the military range, the troops will conduct coastal anti-landing defense exercises, uh, drilling all kinds of defense overall support and hardening positions of the defense areas. The press service said the Marines combat readiness inspection will last for three days and the exercises of the personnel will return to their permanent deployment. Uh, bases and will uh, and will continue scheduled combat training act activities there. Uh, let me. I wanted to.